Get her done. What's up, guys? It's your man, Donovan Sharp, and welcome to the 351st edition of TSR Live, your daily dose of red pill truth, wisdom, and awareness. Uh, happy Halloween, guys. Um, no, um, I do not dress like this every day walking around the house, as you guys can see. For, for those of you guys uh, listening on the replay, um, I would strongly advise that you uh, certainly watch the video replay. I, of course, am, you know, I don't know what you call it, a judo master, karate master, or whatever. But um, but I'm celebrating Halloween. Of course, my guest tonight uh, is a man who always looks good. Silent Mr. 25, Silent J. Mr. 25 says, sweep the leg. You know what? I actually need to change my sign to hashtag sweep the leg. I actually had... Uh, a bit of a stomach issue this morning and all day today. And I had that in my mind to put hashtag sweep, sweep the leg on my sign. Uh, but when I go on the brother pill a bit later on, I think I might do that classic fucking movie. Kevin, listen, man, I think you and I are about you. We're, we're of the same generation. Do you remember Karate Kid? Dude, I have three black belts. Yes. Oh, shit. Oh, well, of yeah. Course. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Karate Kid very well. As a, I was born in 69, but hell, in the 80s, you know how many fuckers I actually fought who tried to use that damn crane maneuver? I'm like, Swear to God, dude. Nobody ever tried to use it on me, man. Fuck. Well, I enjoyed the match. <laughs> and I, and I, listen, I, I'll also tell you this. Um, there is a YouTube series um, about, it's like a continuation like 35 years later. Oh, yes, yes. A blonde kid, I'm, yeah. A blonde kid who got kicked in the face by, you know, by the crane or whatever. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he starts up like the Cobra Kai dojo and everything. And I'm, dude, I saw. I binge watched it. I binge watched Cobra Kai. Is it any good? Dude, let me tell you something. Cobra Kai is YouTube Red is going to is, a, is going to be a thing. Cobra Kai, I, I watched one episode thinking it was going to be cheesy. I found myself 13 hours later fucking pumped. Yeah. I felt like a white dude who saw Rocky for the first time. Oh, oh my god. I saw this shit. Oh. I was like, I was back in the 80s, back in my shit. I'm like, yeah. And the show was great. It was absolutely oh, I great. Out. I have got to check it out because it's funny. I saw the, the the commercial, and we'll get to what we're talking about here in just a minute. I remember the the, the commercial starts out with the final scene in the first Karate Kid where he does the crane. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really do anything. He just kind of inches forward. Daniel kicks him in the face, and then it's mm -hmm. over. Well, when he drops, you know, he kicks him in the face, and then the screen kind of pans out, and all of a sudden, the blonde kid—I don't even know what the guy's name is—he wakes up. He's got beers around him. You know, he's I don't know forty something years old, and Daniel Russo is now the successful car salesman, and he just and he meets up with like these punk teenage kids, and he kicks their asses. And mm -hmm. he's like, you know what? I'm starting up Cobra Kai, and I was like, "Yo, I am in. I'm here for it, man." So I'm glad to hear that it's. Uh, I'm glad to hear that it's actually a pretty good series, man. I might check that out. I think his name was Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. I, I, I mean, I, all I know is, uh, like I said, hashtag sweep the leg. We are brought to you in part by 1821manmade.com, your home for all of your beard grooming needs. 1821manmade is a sponsor of mine, thanks in large part to Kevin Samuels himself. Uh, Kevin Samuels uh, introduced me to Aston LaFon of 1821 uh, manmade.com and Aston LaFon got a hold. I actually, Kevin put me in touch with Aston LaFon and, and that was, I think that was almost a year ago and they have been a proud sponsor of TSR live. Uh, ever since then, we are also brought to you by happy hippo herbals.com your home for the highest quality kratom on the planet for an energy boost, laser focus, and product uh, energy boost laser pro laser focus and enhanced mood look no further than happy hippocratum go to happy now and save 20 percent when you pay with bitcoin kevin the reason i have you on today is we had a very short conversation yesterday and, and one thing that i have um one thing that um that 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 uh that i always have uh uh our, our conversations are very productive they don't last very long mm -hmm. and yesterday i discussed with you the reason I wanted to have you on the show. And a lot of guys say, okay, I don't know how to dress. You know, I want to be more attractive to women. Mm -hmm. um, and so I hire a, a style consultant guy. I hire Kevin Samuels or a Tanner Guzzi uh, or anyone else who, or any, or anyone else who knows how to dress. They mm -hmm. spend all of the, they spend all this money on these clothes. And one, one show actually comes to mind, Kevin, I, I'm sure you're probably aware of it. It's called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Yeah. And yeah. And these guys look so good afterwards, but something is weird about the way they look. They're not necessarily congruent. Mm -hmm. And 
reason for that is because their style preference is off. Yes, you look great in what you wear, but your personality, your lifestyle, what you are trying to convey is not matching up with what you are wearing. So right. the name the, the 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 name of this episode is what do your clothes say about you as a man? Tell me, Kevin, what do your clothes say about you as a man? I've already got a compliment in here. Kevin is looking clean as usual by Fitness for Life. Okay, so I just took off the jacket so I can actually visually show guys. Understand something. Your image or your style is a language. Have you ever gone up to those martial arts schools since you're talking about Karate Kid? Say nine martial arts style taught as one. Right. Okay. Right. That's like saying speaking nine different languages taught as one. Do you think you could speak Mandarin, French, Latin, Greek, uh, and et cetera, in one sentence and have it make sense? Okay. No. Same thing, that, that concept doesn't make any sense. There are nine different style personalities. A shirt is a shirt is a shirt, but it's the style personality that it fits into, which is the language that it communicates. Okay. So like uh, our first episode, we talked about drop the Jordans. Yes. Oh, God, yeah. we got a lot of heat about that. Don't, don't wear Jordans if you want to be taken seriously. But here's the thing. Now, for, for you who know me and for the guys who typically watch me, if I busted up on this live stream in some off-white or some Supreme, some shit like that, and I had on some retro Jordans. The shit would be clean. But, 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 but would it make sense for who you know? You look at me and be like, yeah, that's you... cool, but that's, that's not you. Right, right. I would be speaking a different clothing language than who I am. You are congruent. You actually, your image actually makes sense when the person you are here is reflected out here. Yes. And that's why that queer eye thing doesn't work. They basically put a guy in a costume. Today's the Halloween. I could put you in a costume and that could be a, a bespoke $10,000 double breasted suit. Right. But it's still a costume if it doesn't fit your style personality. So you mean to tell me I can't wear this getup the other 364 days a year, Kevin? Is that what you're telling me? Well, I'm hit a post today. I was like, <laughs> I was like, if, if I was like, today is the only day where the average black, what a lot of black women's hair makes sense. If your hair, <laughs> if your hair only makes sense on Halloween, there's a problem. Purple is not a normal thing. <laughs> you, you, oh yes. Sharp assist asks, are we taking calls today? Yes. 914-205-5356. If you have a question for Kevin, you can either call the number or you can put it in the chat. Kevin, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, for all you sisters, and listen, there are a lot of white girls out there too that have some fucked up hair. If your hair only makes sense on October 31st, then you probably got the wrong hairdo. You got, just got something going on. So uh, the whole thing comes down to style personality. Style right. personality just means who you ultimately are in your heart of hearts. And then what that means what the, the boots that Donovan Sharp with his um, bad boy style personality will be drastically different than the boots Kevin Samuels puts on with his European style personality. Right. But it's still a boot. And that's the difference. Okay. So how does one, and I know that you guys can't see me on the screen. You can only see Kevin. Um, I'm going to change that here in just a second. How does how does a man go about? Because I think that's the most important thing, Kevin. I think that I think that it's great to look good, but how does one decide what their style personality is? This is a difficult question because okay. for the average guy, okay, it's hard for anyone to figure out their style personality, professionals or otherwise. Okay, the. Seven, the average person does not wear 70 to 80% of their clothing. The what? reason, yep. Wow. I, I, because I say, Donovan, if I were to tell you, we're going to go meet any particular situation, we're going to meet this person, we're going to go on this business meeting, we're going to do these things, you would automatically know what in your closet actually would work for that situation to put you in the mindset you need to be in. Right. That's exactly right. So like when you're about to go, let's say if we're going to go out of town, let's say you lived in, I lived in New York City, you lived in Miami. And I said, Donovan, we're going to have a fellas trip. We're going to go out of a fellas trip to Vegas. <laughs> right. You you know what the fuck you go in your closet to get and pack for Vegas. Exactly right. Because it has to work in Vegas to get you the most opportunities to have that great weekend. So 70 to 80% of our stuff doesn't work because it's that not speaking the right language. Okay. And what I seek to do with the style personality is 
make, basically make almost 100% of everything you wear fit. It The easiest way to get your style personality is actually work with a consultant. Okay. And okay. I'll tell you why. Okay. In one hour, I or someone like myself can tell you what your style personality is, and you can invest in that in one hour versus you going to the store and having them all tell you this shirt or this sweater wow. or this jacket, and you can't, but they, but each one of those, you have to hope they're right. You have to, you can't make a mistake. How many times have you bought something and you thought it was a good idea, or you know people that bought something you thought was a good idea, and they turned around and never wore it, has tags on it? I've done that before. So that's a way, so that money would have been better spent investigating to a style consultant. So they could have said, yeah, that's not your style personality. A lot of times the, my biggest value for guys is telling them what not, what doesn't work for them. Oh, okay. So, so, and, and you know, the interesting thing is, is I think that most guys know what does look good on them. And, and, and it's just like game. Like we can actually relate this to the red pill lifestyle. We all know what we want in a woman. We want a woman who looks good, cooks good, sucks good, stays in pocket, et cetera, et cetera. But where a lot of guys get tripped up is that they for, they, they don't know what not to look for. We know all of the slut tells, um, mm -hmm. purple hair, uh, you know, uh, nose rings, um, you know, tattoos, et cetera. But it's it's the um, it's the uh, the nondescript slut tell the the the, the undercover slut tells if she lives by herself if mm -hmm. she works out at a meathead gym if she works in a call center these are all things that are that are normal everyday parts of life according to the feminist standard today so how does that relate to what guys uh, think in terms of what they wear they know what to wear for the most part but they don't know what not to wear and you see some pretty you see some pretty terrible examples out there well first. A horse is a horse is a horse is a horse. <laughs> no, knowing what, if you're going to wear boots, knowing what boots to wear, like I just gave the example. Right. That means more than anything else. But knowing that even if you can't say, well, you know what? I need a black leather jacket and I need some, uh, some boots. Right. All right. Even if you can't find the ones you need to, but you know they're not cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. You know that you're black leather jacket uh is not the kind that looks like you know uh like the fawns would wear or some shit it just depends on you would know uh eh, oh yeah saying you need a suit or you need a shirt or you need a sweater knowing that your style personality is bad boy you know brooks brothers is not gonna be your, it's your shit right so you can just go ahead and mark anything brooks brothers off your list forever so if somebody came along and said, Donovan, Brooks Brothers is having a 99% off sale. And you can get, and you're like, great, but I don't wear bucks. I don't wear these white shoes that look like I fit on a golf cart. That's not me. So I can just skip it. Knowing what to skip helps you not have a bunch of waste. Right. And I like I like uh, leather. Like, I mean, you've seen what my watch looks like. My watch is a, it's a big, thick leather cuff. The button. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, they're 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 shell casings from a from a from a 38 caliber Winchester. Um, also, you know, a 12 gauge shotgun, and then of course I've got the you know I've got the, um, mm -hmm. uh, I've got the handcuff uh, you know I've got the handcuff necklace. So yeah, that would not look good with a with a Brooks Brothers suit. Um, we've actually got a caller on the line. Let's go to the phone lines here. Area code 205. You're on live with Donovan and special guest Kevin Samuels. Go ahead. What's up, Donovan? What's up, Kevin? How y'all doing tonight? Doing good, man. Is this Red Jedi? <laughs> no. Nah, oh crazy. man, I thought it was Red Jedi again. What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> you know what? The funny thing about it, you know, uh, I was trying to explain some of these things, these principles to my nephew. The first thing when I look at Kevin, he's dressed casual, but what he's wearing fits his physique. Right. And so what I try to explain, what I try to explain is, first of all, get in shape. So Kevin's in shape. Now he's not like super buff, but he's thin and lean. And so his clothes reflect that. And so I, I think that's the key thing. First of all, get your ass in shape. Fit over fashion. I don't want to see what you thought about that. Well, the one coming to my channel, I try to make complicated concepts simple. Right. So everyday guys, you don't have to be a fucking master of fashion. Just remember what I say. Fit over fashion, which means fit is more important than a brand. A $5 t-shirt that fits is better than a $5,000 suit that doesn't. Fit over fashion. Then quality 
is better than quantity. Right. Better to have good, the best quality you can afford with the best fit than a bunch of name brand expensive shit that looks terrible. Uh, and then after that, it's really just a matter of style preference. If guys can really focus on the three F's, you can look good and differentiate yourself from other men. Okay. Footwear, frames, fragrance. And we'll get more into that later on. Footwear, frames, and fragrance. Mm -hmm. And my guess is that Kevin, and give me one second, Kevin looks good right now because of the frames. I actually like your glasses, man. Mm -hmm. The glasses are clean. Footwear, um, I'm sure you're probably wearing some some really nice shoes. And then, of course, fragrance. You look like you smell good. Right. Um, uh, by the way, Kevin does have a YouTube channel. This guy's got 24,000 subscribers. Um, so I'm going to put this Kevin Samuels channel. You guys, need, you guys need to subscribe to this guy. This guy knows his shit. Uh, this guy was not a... Um, th this guy was not uh, dumb enough to get his YouTube channel taken away. <laughs> uh, I unfortunately, I unfortunately couldn't help myself. Um, Erico two hundred five. When when you're talking to your nephew um, about now, actually, let me let me ask your both of your opinion because you guys both seem to know what you're talking about at least in terms of fit over fashion. A lot of guys like myself, I would like to think, well, hey, I've told people, hey, listen, if you're in good shape, if you're in great shape, no matter what you wear, you're gonna look good. If you're in good shape, you can wear a V. You can wear a white V-neck T-shirt, you know, a, a clean pair, you know, a, a good clean pair of um, of uh, of blue jeans that fit that look good, and I don't know, a pair of I don't know, forty dollars skateboard shoes, maybe a watch and some aviator shades, and you're looking good. What do you think, Kevin? Does it matter what you're wearing, or does or does fit really trump all when it comes to that stuff? Fit trumps everything because you can be in great shape. But your body proportion, let's say you have broad shoulders. Let's say you have a, you, you may, your shoulders may be one size, your waist is another. Right. So right. if you automatically run around in a triple X to fit your shoulders, what is it going to say around your waist? It's going to be flapping in the wind. Right, right, right. Or, so going and get things nipped and tucked to where it actually accentuates your shape and helps you maintain that masculine silhouette and masculine frame. That's really what it comes down to fit. It just means your clothes should not be a distraction. Your clothes should be an enhancement and they should really help just move the conversation on to where they're not focusing on. There's something not quite right about this presentation. Right, right. This actually, this this segues perfectly into this into this uh, into this next question. Joby Juan Coyote says, can we discuss peacocking? And of course, Kevin, I'm sure you know all about peacocking, right? You probably see it in the fashion industry all the time. Is peacocking good? Is it bad? Is it is it 90s cheesy PUA? What are your thoughts on that? Your clothes should not be the centerpiece. Okay, there we go. A man needs to pick his clothes out with care, be purposeful in putting them on, and then forget about it. If I come up and start hollering at a chick in the real, we're not talking to PUA stuff, but if I come and I start talking to somebody, a chick or a business or a business colleague, I should just look credible in their eyes. It should not be to the point where my cologne is screaming to the point of like, okay, you, you, this smells good, but it's too much. I should not be wearing, you know, I'm in a business meeting, but I'm in a fucking white, white tie and tails. Uh, that's a bit much. Right. I would say so. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't be going to, you know, sit at my kids little league game and then I'm in a double breasted suit, nor should I go to the office and I'm in linen plants uh, and, and some flip flops and a T-shirt. We all we all know we all work on archetypes, just like you talked about the slut tales. Right. We have archetypes in our mind that map and you have to if you're going to be in that position, you have to map to the archetype. Case in point. If me, you, and 205 were in a different city or diff in a different city and we were completely lost, we were in a, we were in a, law, in, a, in a mall and we were lost and we were trying to find out where to go. There's a man in a suit. There's a guy in flip-flops, tennis shoes, and a t-shirt. There's a girl over there who's, you know, got purple hair and everything else. Who are you going to ask for direction? You're going to ask for, you're going to ask someone who's familiar with the area. You're going to look at, the, and you're going to look at these three people. And which one of those three people would you ask for directions? Most people will go to the guy in the suit because we associate the suit with being a boss, being a manager, being somebody, an authority. You you sit back and say, well, 
which one of these people is going to be able to give me the directions? Now, that person may be the least that may, that person may just be there, but that's what we work towards. That's our mind. It works toward these archetypes. So the question about fit, it's fit more than anything else. And if guys can just focus on sizing down in their everything, sizing down one tends to help a lot of guys. Okay. The biggest problem is most guys want to feel bigger than they are. You know, I'm six foot four, 195 pounds. Mm -hmm. For the how many people in the chat room do we have right now? Uh, I've got 56 uh, looking right now. So if I ask the 56 people in the chat room right now, quickly, what size shirt do I wear? Quickly. I'm 6'4", almost 200 pounds. Shit, man. I have no idea. And let's just see what happens. You'll be surprised. I've actually got someone in the chat who's 5'7", 155 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, Stefan or Steven mm -hmm. uh, says, what should a 25-year-old black male wear? Now, here's the thing, Kevin. And uh, I've, I've got a caller in the queue. I'm going to get to them in just a second. The thing is this, Kevin. Mm -hmm. A lot of people... Um, uh, I, and, and again, fit over fashion for sure. There, there is, there is no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that, yeah, five seven one fifty. The problem is, is that there are so many more questions that need to be asked to figure out someone's style preference, right? I mean, you know, what what looks good on you? What kind of things are you interested in? What what is your personality, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can't like like you can't now. Nobody wants to you know peacocking. Obviously, is a thing of the past. But if you're gonna pull it off, you can't be a guy who's an introvert. If you know mm -hmm. what I mean. If you're gonna if you're really gonna do something as as foolhardy as peacocking, you better have the you better have the personality to match it. Mm -hmm. you can't go with the rugged outdoorsman look if you're a homebody. So, what kind of questions would you ask someone? one to ask themselves, hey, we need to find out what your style preference. So what questions are you going to ask someone <laughs> who's trying to find out what their style preference is? You're giving away my secret sauce. Oh, uh, uh, because when, when I deal with somebody, they have to answer a, 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 a lot of questions. I have to have a questionnaire. But the questionnaire in and of itself is not a be all end all tool. I ask guys one simple question. You need to know who you really are. So Here's a question. If I was an animal, what kind of animal would I be? Now, that answer only makes sense if you know why it's asked. Um, here's something you can ask yourself. Whose style do I who, who style in popular media do I like and why? What do I like about it? And then question. try to emulate that. Yep. See, a lot of black men, when you ask that question, one of the one of the things that comes back more often than not is Idris Elba. I like Idris Elba style. Yeah, but Idris Elba where? Oh wow, yes. He, you know he was a humdog. He's been this. I was like, when you say Idris Elba, what they most people mean? You mean Stringer Bell on the wire? Yeah, that Idris Elba. I'm like, well, let's. You gotta you gotta really get down. So asking yourself whose style you like and why. And then just saying, I like it because it's it's masculine, but it's functional. Right. Um, right. And then knowing the nine style personalities and what falls into them, into the categories, is more than anything else. And and here's the thing, guys. That's why I say there's so much better use of time to actually just work with a consultant to help them map it out for you. Because by the time you spend 10, 12, you're going to spend a lot of time doing this. And you can't be wrong. That's the thing. You can't. You have no margin for error doing it on your own. Uh, let's see. In the chat room, we got we got a guess. Uh, Lee Brown says seventeen neck, thirty seven sleeve for your dude size shirt. So here's medium, medium. Another guy said medium, medium, large, large. Most people, I I wear between a medium and a small. Okay, between a medium and a small. My but the thing is that's just these American shirt sizes. But the thing is, I said it before, a guy needs to know his measurements. Neck size, his arm length, his chest size, and his waist. Okay. Then you can know what should fit you uh, and then kind of go from there. Now, go ahead. Yeah, let's uh, let's go back to the phone lines here. Uh, caller who has blocked their number or calling from outside the country, you are on live with Donovan and Kevin. Go ahead. Could be a troller. <laughs> We'll find out here in a second. Caller, are you with me? All right. I guess not. 
I didn't hear anything on the other. I didn't hear anything. So, um, did we want to get? What are we gonna do with the, the three Fs? Let's mm-hmm. do the three Fs, man. Okay. Yeah, the frames, the 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 footwear, and the fragrance. Okay. And I agree with you. I think those, and the reason I agree with you is because you know style preference. I don't. Why are those things, and I think I might know why, but I want you to tell us because you obviously know what you're talking about. Okay. Why do you think that these three things are the most important in terms of style? All right. So, guys, understand something. Right now, uh, you're looking at what I have on right now. It is a black cashmere t-shirt, a black cashmere sweater, and I have on black jeans. Right. This is what I would call a canvas. Okay. Any guy can wear this and look good. But the difference is, what is your footwear going to say? If I had on tennis shoes or something like that, if I had on Jordans or something like that, this would look completely different. Right, 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 right. I can change this look so much just by choosing a different color boot. So right there, I, I, I pulled out a shit ton of boots because right. with each, with right now I'm wearing black boots. This outfit looks different with this versus this versus this. Okay. Versus these. It's all footwear. And the footwear a guy wears, let's focus on footwear. Your footwear communicates so much. And listen, before you get started, you just pulled out five pairs of shoes. You're wearing one. You pulled out four pairs of shoes. That's five different outfits Mm -hmm. like that. So... Your footwear communicates status. It communicates, to a certain degree, uh, perceived wealth. Right. Um, shoes, back in the day, used to be only, most people didn't have shoes. <laughs> so only the richest people or the wealthy people had good footwear. And especially as a man, when you have on grown damn man shoes, you can you get people look at you differently. People who follow my channel watch this often. Now all of those are just boots, but it's it, you know it really matters about like I said it's the foundation of every uh, every outfit, and and of course if you've ever if you how many girls do you know women love their shoes and their bags if they do, so they pay attention to your shoes and your bag too. But men do it too. I can take guy. I've taken client to chamber of commerce meetings, and I say I want you to look the look at the decision makers or the owners, look in their eyes, and watch how they'll imperceptibly keep looking down at a guy's shoes if they look bad, because they because guys are like guys don't really look at it, and but once they get clued in, they're like, damn, he does keep looking down at the shoes. I'm like, yeah, because it doesn't. He's got on busted, dusty shoes, and he got on a suit. But you got to think, do I want this guy to be? my consultant or not do i want to give this guy any money if he couldn't even shine his it sends a bad message right. it's not congruent so it's like am i going to invest my money here but then you get some guy that comes in with a suit from suit supply which i love and then just with a with a pair of shoes this has a nice shine on them it's like okay this makes sense i i would be i'd be happy to do that if and, like someone who hires and fitness for life my guess is probably a um, uh, it's probably a personal trainer. I'm going to have uh, another guy that I met at the 21 convention by the name of Bube. He's going to be on the show tomorrow. It's almost like putting your trust in someone who, like if you want to hire someone to help you out with fitness, they got to be in good shape. Yep. If you want someone who is a financial advisor, they can't be, they can't be driving a busted, you know, 1984 Nissan Sentra that they can barely pay for. You have to, you have to look the part. You have to be the part. Um, let's go back to the phone lines here. Area code 404. You're on live with Donovan. Go ahead. Donovan, what's good? It's Chase LeBeau. Chase LeBeau, what's going on, brother? Oh, it's all good. Just Man, hold on. Wait, wait. wait. One. Real quick, Chase. Now, I know you're calling from Atlanta, and I hear sirens in the background. Yes. So, mm-hmm. like, you're either in College Park, East Point, or, dare I say, Bankhead. You in one of those areas? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, just making sure. Just making I'm, sure. I'm just south of the. I'm just north of the amphitheater, and just south of what used to be Turner Field. Okay, gotcha. Oh, okay, okay. So you're good. You're good. I actually stayed out there when I went to Atlanta. I stayed at the Centennial, the Ramada Centennial, uh, Centennial Park, right across from where Muhammad Ali lit the torch. 
Shitty hotel, by the way. I don't mean to give them, you know, bad advertisement. But listen, if you were calling me from Clayton County, that'd be all right. But if you're calling me from Bankhead, I'd be like, yo, Chase, get off the phone, save yourself, call me back later. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what's going on, Chase? How you doing? Um, it's all good. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. What about you, Kevin? I'm good, man. I'm 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 sitting here working. Just working. What we got? What do you got for us? Okay. All right. Here's what we got. Um, and you may not, you all may not know this, but I'm a cologne fiend. And hmm. in my blue peel days, I wasted tons of money on trying to find the perfect fragrance of fragrances and, and i gave away and sold more than i want so my question is how do i find out what colognes are right for me without breaking the bank because i tried scentbird but scentbird doesn't have the latest stuff out yet so i'm trying to figure out what can i do to test out these fragrances and see what people what i like and then what other people find and compliment me on oh. well like anything else I'm gonna put the camera directly on Kevin so that he can see because I saw I, I saw what you just did there with all the free <laughs> like anything else, you gotta know know what you like. Like for me, I know the fragrance notes I like. I like rose, I like amber, and I like oud. Now, those are my fragrances. Um, but you gotta know why you're wearing a fragrance. Is are you going to work? Are you going out on a date? Are you uh going to the, are you going uh where are you gonna be? You got to pick a fragrance based on occasion and then what you dig. I do fragrance reviews all the time. So what I do is I review a fragrance and tell you how well it's complimented, how well it performs, where to wear it, what kind of style personality best goes with it, and then my overall opinion. In general, all right. a man can always wear clean, fresh, inoffensive. Yeah. The, the show sponsor. 1821 man made yes. this is the one fragrance i think that every guy should own because this can comes from a company that doesn't even specialize in fragrances this thing is a panty dropper it performs they have an entire line of body products and i'm not sponsored but this shit just smells incredible it smells incredible at the end of the day dude you want to if you're trying to attract the it, what is what is their goal? Are you trying to just smell good all the time for you? Are you trying to get choosing signals from folks? Are you trying just to what what is it? That's what you need to know. Also, oh, yeah. well, yeah. And we see, my main focus is no matter where I go, what I'm doing, I'm trying to turn heads, turn women's heads. Like, oh, that guy smells good. I want to. He tastes as good as he smells. That's, That's my main focus. Hey, you can, you can wear 1821 man-made sweet tobacco spirits and do that. See, here's the one thing. I'm a, I am I do this for a living. So you don't need a fragrance collection. I just showed you maybe 2% of my fragrance collection. That's on that little dot. That's 2%. I got, on, I got over 1,000 bottles of fragrance. You don't need that. You need, the average guy needs about six. One for the fall, one for the winter, one for the spring, one for the summer, one signature scent that goes all year round, and then one that's special occasion date night. That is a full fragrance collection. Cool Jet 87 right. says the name my, of um, Go ahead. Go I was saying I already chose my signature. That's Dolce Gabbana. That's the most I got. Which, which, one, which one, though? Dolce Gabbana Poor Harm. I think if, if I'm not okay, yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, so that's a fougere. So basically, what that fits into is clean, fresh, bright. So things that would fit in that category would be Aqua di Gio, Profumo. Things that would fit in that category, things are like uh, Prada Lome. Um, what what are some other stuff that would fit in that category? Uh, I like Sauvage by uh, by mm -hmm. Dior. Dior Dior. The Dior that would fit in that category, yeah, Dior Sauvage, well, it wouldn't fit in that category, but that is damn sure. That is the one fragrance I recommend to mm -hmm. a lot of guys, Dior Sauvage and then Blue de Chanel, because they're just universally inoffensive and they have a compliment, but women love these things. Yes. But the things he's talking about, he that's more, leans more towards like a barbershop kind of, it's called a fougere. You don't need to know that, but I'm just throwing it out there for, uh, so what you would want to do is because you have one category covered, then you would want to make sure you have something that's like a little bit more sweet 
uh, like for a date night. Again, something like this. If you have Dolce & Gabbana pour homme to wear in the daytime, Dolce & Gabbana, the one eau de parfum, is a great date night panty dropper, romantic fragrance. A round, not getting the six fragrances you need, plus making sure they're well rounded, will, will set most guys. And where to buy fragrances? I detest buying, paying retail. I hate it. Good. Find the fragrance you like and then go online to a place like Fragrance Net or Fragrance X or to, you know, Forever Lux all these companies who actually sell online you can come to my channel and i have several different places where i buy from i won't pay retail if i have if, if i can avoid it why why give that money away it's the same juice at the end of the day Good stuff man excellent information there chase as long as I I to squeeze it that's what counts that's it well thanks for the call um uh chase you can call into the show anytime um actually i'm actually hearing something kevin mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. It is the Dit Police, TSR Tower's favorite troll, area code 413, the Puerto uh -oh. Rican. Uh, you know, I'm going to call you the Puerto Rican judge. I love this guy. He likes to call on. He likes to give me a call, call me names. He likes to call me coons. What's going on, 413? What you got for me today? 413, back in the house. Yes, sir. Are you, <laughs> are you celebrating a white holiday today? You're still cooning, man. Really? I think so. I, I I think so. Gentlemen, I thought I educated you about this. You still up to no good? <laughs> still doing it, man. Still doing it. I you know, the interesting thing is, is I, I don't really know if Halloween is good. a white holiday. I know it's a pagan holiday, but I mean, I am wearing a white gi, so I guess that does count as me cooning. Yeah, it's pagan. That's what it is. Yes. This is not that bad, actually. So I'll give you that. Appreciate it. But why are you cooning? That's my question. Yeah, not going to answer that. <laughs> I love this guy. And listen, believe it or not, man, I've actually talked to him a few times on O'Shea's show. And he's very adversarial. He's, mm -hmm. actually, starting, he's actually starting to grow on me a little bit. Um, he, 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 hey, man, understand oh, something. But, your your trolls work for you. They are your best marketing. I, I swear to God. And by the way, area code 413, if you're still listening, I'm actually going to put together an introduction featuring you. So. Dude. Dude, dude understand, understand something. I have a troll that he he's my best employee. Everything I, I drop, he's right there. As soon as I mean he's part of the notification squad, everything else. I'm like, you, I'm like, you I was like, and here's the funny thing. For you fuckers who don't know this, a a, a dislike counts one and a half times more than a like. Hell yes. In the algorithm. Yes, you better believe it. I'm like, <laughs> you guys are stupid. I love that. he always uh, my, my ratings always jump up. I had 50. Listen, I had 56 viewers. It just jumped up to 65. So I appreciate that area code 40413. Uh, I call him Puerto Rican Judgment Day. Let's go back to the phone lines back to area code 205. You're on live with Donovan. Go ahead. Did we get to hey, five already? Yeah, I called a, a few minutes. I called a few minutes ago. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, fitness well, for life. A, I want to make. Yeah, I want to make another point. OK, I am in the fitness. I'm a personal trainer. So here's the thing, like from listening to your shows, the you know, some of the things, you know, the red pill now is get yourself in shape, get your finances. Once you get in shape, most anything looks good on you. As far as the fragrances, uh, I use Jimmy Choo when I'm going out, Jimmy Choo, man, intense. Um, when I'm in the gym, uh, the Savage by Dior. But here's the thing, attracting non-black women, they respect style. Okay. Not overdone, but style. The way Kevin is dressing now, that's the way I dress all the time. And none black women will stop me and, and talk to me just based on the dress, based right. on the shoes. And they'll tell you. They'll tell me. So you don't even have to spend a lot of money. It's just when you're in shape, everything looks good on you. Well, a, a big, I mean, yes, because most clothes are fit. Most clothes are made off of a, of a mold, so the closer you can get to the mold, that's that's good. But the thing is, when you look good, your mind is good. You feel better when you're looking good, smelling good. You feel better, so you're actually drawing more positive energy, more attract, more things. Uh, 
you're being more positive. Now, as far as dressing to attract outside of a race, uh, I've always known that the way I dress makes me universally attractive. Right. It just simply does. It makes me universally attractive because I fit an archetype. It look clean, professional, this, that. It just fits. Now, if you dress in traditional dress in any race, you're going to attract more of that race. If you want to attract the broadest segment of people, you need to become the broadest representation while still maintaining your style, which is why the three Fs are so important. We already hit footwear. Footwear is critically important. Fragrance. I, me, 205, everybody in the chat room, we could all have on shoes, all wear this canvas, a black top and black jeans. We, we could all look like Smith. What's the, but if everybody closed their eyes and walked down the line of all of us, they couldn't see a damn one of us. But if they went, they could smell the one wearing 1821 man-made sweet right. tobacco spirits. Absolutely. And this is the one of the first senses that develops when you're in, outside the womb, the sense of smell. Smell can take you back to your grandma's cookies. It can take you back to so many different places. Smell does things that the only music and those kind of things you can hear something and take you back. This is the closest tied to memory. Incredibly important. A lot of guys don't pay enough attention to the scent. And mm -hmm. and but listen, I was one of those. I was one of these guys, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Or I remember that I'll never forget the very first time I had you on. It was episode one forty. We're on episode three fifty one, but it was episode one forty. I can't tell you how much I learned. The first thing I went out and did is I got in touch with eighteen twenty one manmade dot com. Mm -hmm. They send me free shit all the time. And then I went and I got my smell game. I've got Aqua de Jo. I've got uh, Sauvage by Christian Dior. The Jeez. smell game, the smell game has to be tight. And listen, I got a girlfriend. I want my girlfriend Absolutely. to be attracted to my smell. Mm -hmm. you know? Like I want to smell good when I'm with her. And I think a lot of guys get lazy because they figure, oh, I got a girlfriend or wife. It doesn't matter. It matters. Well, they want you to smell good too. Yes. So, and and the thing is, footwear means more shoes mean more to women than they do to men but you can still have the six basic shoes you need make sure they're quality and you're good then fragrance is a way for you to season yourself you know if some people like hot sauce some people like putting pepper on it this is your fragrance season yourself your woman wants to walk by with you smelling savage so she can say, man damn my man smells good but she also like other bitches smelling you be like oh who is that you smell good <laughs> that, that just that bitch is like yeah that's mine Women are do, they, women are into that. And if you guys have noticed, I've been changing my glasses throughout because frames is the last thing. Guys, we can't change our hair that quickly. We just can't. The way a man can change his face is with uh, facial hair or frames. As a man, whether you wear glasses or not, I mean, prescription glasses or not is irrelevant. All you need is these. Yo, those are yo, those are so clean. Those are clean, man. One pair of awesome aviator glasses for any guy. So Donovan could have exactly what I'm wearing on what right now. Again, let's look at it. Black shirt, black pants, black jeans. This is the bad boy look. It's the European look. It's the rugged look. It's watch every too. style personality. Well, see, the watch is whether you have the watch on or not, I'm just saying the basics, it would all fit. So it's footwear, frames, fragrance, and you walk out of the door. Now, I didn't get uh, Lasix because I wanted to switch my glasses. So let's say I'm sitting in front of you and I'm wearing these. Right. These frames say something completely different than these. Wow, man. Like you completely changed your look just with your eyewear. And those say something different than these. You're, the guy you're on the show with, O'Shea, on the Brother Pill, he's changed his complete look up just by throwing on frames. <laughs> and that's, and honestly, when I first talked to O'Shea, I was like, you know one of the things you could do to switch up your look? Look at Some you, frame. Man, right now! Just just changing, and, and each one of these frames say something a little bit different. What about a guy like me who doesn't normally wear glasses? I mean... Oh, because... gotcha. I got you. So you the the I, the aviators I had on yeah. the sunglasses. So we will go from this to that. 
Yeah, those are clean, man. I'm actually, I'm actually trying to step up my uh, step up my game on my show because I see O'Shea kind of does it. He kind of he kind of makes a mockery out of. It. He's got the mm -hmm. glasses on or whatever. But you know, I mean, you can only go so far with the wife beater and the you know. I mean, you know, I mean, I want to be comfortable, but hey, I mean, you got to look good too, right? Or yeah, and or you can go to something like this as a transition. So in the in the in the office, they're clear, but when I go outside. This lens turns into a sunglass. This is actually a converted pair of sunglasses and I turned them into optical. So instead of having to switch glasses indoors and outdoors, this is an indoor and outdoor pair. You don't have to have prescription lenses in these things. You can get a prescription pair and just turn them into a pair of sunglasses. And the reason, and the reason I stepped through all that is to show guys how different my face looked with each one of these glasses I'm telling you like you're it's like you're being a transformer like i don't know if you guys remember transformer there was a transformer named six shot and mm -hmm. did six different things like that's what you just did so and and you can all as a man one pair of glasses will always work this black horn rim pair of glasses works any decade any season any reason and then that first pair of glasses that aviator will always work now regardless as to where you live you can always have footwear, frames, and fragrance, and then just be out of the door. But we're in the fall, and the fall is my favorite season because you get to wear one item that is quintessentially masculine and rugged. I'm about to show you guys that now. Okay. Well, when I started the show out, it gets you I here. actually took this off, but Donovan saw this. You saw this Oh yeah. Um, when I first got on the, on the channel. This is a denim. This is a denim jacket. That is so. This cool. is a blazer. This is more my style personality. It would work for Donovan, um, but would it work for everybody? I'm not sure. But the next item, the next two items, every guy needs to have in his wardrobe. Okay. Ready? Let's go. All right. Every guy needs to have in his wardrobe. <laughs> A brown, oh my God, bomber type jacket, or uh, I actually use this as a. It's more of a moto jacket. Yeah, a brown suede jacket of some sort. Look at how well that works on this canvas. This black and brown, and this is perfect this time of year. Suede is more important, especially in a brown. This is the second most important jacket you need, but the first one is this one. <clears throat> yeah, the jacket. Yeah, Fitness for Life says that jacket is cold. Hell yeah, that jacket is clean as a motherfucker. I'm living my best life. I'm not going back and forth with you fools. I'm gonna get to uh, listen. I see all your questions in the, the most important jacket every guy has is this one. Oh, there it is. That's what you need right there. It's the black leather jacket. Yes, sir. The black leather jacket is quintessentially masculine, sexy, and makes everybody's style personality just look good. This, like everybody can wear a leather jacket. You just said it, regardless of what your style personality is. So, and this is, and, and honestly, what I just did is I just connected with Donovan. His style leans more bad boy. Everything that I put on before, he can appreciate. But this is probably one of the few things that he could say, I could wear this because it is a black leather jacket. It's bad boy. It's every style's version of bad boy. So black jeans, black leather jacket, quintessentially masculine. And how you wear it with your frames says it all. You, you don't want to wear this look with some poindexter rims. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Yep. There you go. So that's why I brought all this stuff out. So you could see it. And then when somebody sees that from afar yeah. and they get up on you and you're smelling good, they're like, I need to talk to this guy. Or, check, please. Yeah. yeah. They're done. They've chosen you. At that point, all you have to do is not fuck it up. There you go. Just don't trip. Let's go to the phone lines here. Area code 240. Thanks for holding, man. You're on live with Donovan. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you already know what's up, man. It's Ray from PG. Hey, Ray from PG. What's going on, man? Prince George's County out there man. in the Maryland. Yeah, you already know. Everything is everything, man. I'm glad that you had Mr. Samuels on just because 
this is something that I take serious. I have a story to tell. When I was 25, I bought my first suit. I was okay. so excited. This is, I was at the tailor and I was just excited. You know, you could just tell it was radiant. So when I actually wore the suit, I had to go to school that day. Right. When I stepped out of the car from the time that I actually left school that day, I had countless compliments, countless compliments. I was talking to girls and because my my and because of me wearing this suit, it's like I transformed to something to say the least. I got at least like four numbers that day. Right. And this is only because, man, they were like, you know, you know, when you're wearing a suit, their vocabulary changes. Instead of mm-hmm. oh, you look good or something, it's like, oh, you look nice. Ooh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yeah, all that shit. And 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 I never forget my teacher. I had a presentation. That's why I had a presentation that day. That's why I wore my suit. So I get in there, I take off my pea coat. I had the belt, the master shoes with the watch. And oh, my shit. teacher was just like, oh, okay, Mr. Betancourt, you're smelling good. You know, mm-hmm. that's another thing. You know, the the, the, the scent game, you have to step. <laughs> if you're a small man and you're still wearing curve and cool water, uh, come on, man. Jupe. You know, you, you, right. you, 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 can't, you can't. I mean, I mean, that's old school. But you know, Hell you yeah, college days. Your own game up, man. You know, I don't play no games with the perfumes that Molly, you know, uh, Creed, uh, an, an older woman, she introduced me to Creed about. By Killian. You have to have your suit game, your cologne game, your dress shoe game up. If you're a grown man and you're still wearing sneakers, nothing's wrong with wearing sneakers and stuff like that, but you have to have your dress game grown up. Grown man to. shoes. It's a must. It's a necessity. Ray, real quick, man. Real quick. You said the suit was clean. The teacher was impressed. You fucked the teacher, didn't you? <laughs> no, I actually, I actually oh! did it to tell you the truth. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie about that. I'm not gonna lie about it. But <laughs> you know, at least two of the girls that gave me that number that day, I was in the mix. That's what's up. In the mix. Matter of fact, yeah. Matter of fact, one that week I was smashing her, and oh, this was all because, like, hey Donovan, when I t- when I tell you I got out that car, remember Nicholas Cage on Face Off? Yes. He was yes. His jacket that was like me. That's how I felt. God damn. I'm wearing this suit. Caster Troy, I think, was his but, name. But uh yeah, yeah. Hey, Caster Troy, man, you already know what time it is. I already man. know, bro. Smash up, man. Hey, Donovan, you already know what time it is. I'm I'm a disciple, a Donovan, teaching these red pill truths. Keep doing what you're doing, Mr. Samuels. Hey man, I fool with your channel too, man. Keep doing what y'all doing. Dude, appreciate it. Hey, PG, ladies and gentlemen, dropping that knowledge. Hey, listen, he makes a he makes a great point, man. If and again, I'm not I'm not a suit guy, but I know that there's a there, that there will be a time where I have to wear a suit. Uh, my presentation for the 21 convention next year, I might just wear a suit. You know what I mean? Just to come off a little more clean, depending upon what the subject matter is. But I think that every man, I think that every man should wear it should 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 own at least one suit. That's uh, all, all you need is one. You need a well cut dark suit, and then every style personality has their version of a suit that's not a suit. Meaning if you're a corporate style personality, that kind of thing. Yeah. If you're in a suit, most of the time you're going to own more than one suit, but there has to be something for a man that's not sweats or athletic wear and not a suit. See what I'm wearing right now was I call it the canvas black pants. Those pants could have been jeans or they could have been trousers. It could have been a black long sleeve t-shirt. In this case today, it's a cashmere sweater. I could throw that jacket I had on before. I could have the leather jacket, or I could throw that jacket on that's behind me right. and still look good. Now, the shoes I have on right now, they're like a, a, a motorcycle boot. But for this particular outfit, I throw on like this black suede-like boot. Okay, so that is suede, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then we're ready to go out. Hell yeah. And the thing is, it's it for, for a man, my wardrobe is not massively large. I have a lot of different shoes and a lot of different frames, but the canvas I paint on is very small. It's just when I throw this jacket on versus the for the brown one, you got a different feel versus the blue one. It's a different feel versus the white one. It's a different feel. That's because they fit my style personality. Where did I invest most of the money? Footwear and in my frames. Okay. And then like this jacket right here, it's an investment item. Right. You're gonna I don't I don't need right. I don't need a lot of black leather jackets, but the one I put on, I need it to fucking stop traffic for me. So I will put more money, I will put more money in this than I will put in to this damn sweater. Let me show you one more thing. Okay. Hold them up. 
Keep them going while I show something else. No, I got you. Um, I got. I think I've got C in Vegas uh, on the line. I'm going to get to you in just a second. Area code 865. I'm going to get to you in a second. Um, let me see what questions I've got here. Um, yeah, Lorenzo Davis, I see um, I see your question about Armani being a good cologne for 50-year-old men. We're going to ask him as soon as he uh, as soon as he comes back. Wute Samash has a couple of uh, has a couple of questions in here, so we're gonna get we're gonna get to all your questions here in a, uh, in a minute. Again, you guys are listening to TSR Live with Donovan Sharp, a special guest, Kevin Samuels. You guys can check him out by kevinsamuels.com. He's a fashion and image consultant. Uh, he's definitely one of the foremost leaders uh, in fashion and imaging and, and image consulting. You guys can definitely check out his YouTube channel. I put it in the chat. Um, I've also, I'm also gonna put it in the description. Guys, listen, the guy knows his shit. Uh, you guys need to book. You guys need to book your image consultant. And listen, it's a free. It's a, it's a free. What is it? Fifteen minute consultation. Definitely, right. Be worth the time. So, like, for you going to speak at the twenty one convention, a killer blazer would do the job. Right, right, right. right. You got a, a fitted black t shirt and throw on this, and you would look dressed up. There you go. I mean, a suit is just. A pants and a, and a jacket made out of the same material and with a tie. That's it. And honestly, we're, we're trending so much sore not wearing ties. You can throw on a white t shirt, some dark denim jeans, and throw on a blazer or a jacket or a sports coat, all the same thing, interchangeable language, and look great and still casual and dressed down. It's so, See, it's so simple. So simple. Questions here. Lorenzo Davis says, Mr. Kevin, is Armani a good cologne for a 50 year old man to wear? 50? Yeah. Yeah, I'm 50. Okay. <laughs> I'll be 50 in March. All right. Uh, yeah. you were, I, honestly, I thought you were about my age. I thought you were like 45, 46 years yeah, old. Yeah. Yeah. See, Hashtag black don't crack. And uh, and I, I still fuck women in their 20s. Okay. And that's the beautiful thing of being my age. Another thing about men's style. Uh, so many men have not had a roadmap to actually go from teens to their 30s, 40s, and 50s. We That's why we tend to dress down because we don't see men's style being something to aspire to. It's like, I don't want to, it's either I'm going to be a hot young dude or you're a fucking granddad. No, there has to be something in between. <laughs> right. And at, at my age, I'm getting them coming and going. Okay. I'm getting them coming and going uh, because we're my age. They know in order to fuck with me, they got to have their shit together. I'm not dealing with troglodytes. And you got to be at least an eight in my age range to fuck around with me. And then younger women are like, oh, you smell good. Da, 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 da. Have fun with them, too. There you go. And it's all on my terms. Guys, dressing like a modern. I talk, talked about this the other day. Dressing like a modern savage is always going to work. A modern savage is a gentleman warrior scholar. That's all it is. Yep. Being a man who can, and you look like a man who can handle his shit in the bedroom, in the boardroom, and then on the beach. Or in the octagon. That's it. And then, and the damn sure in that point. And if you got, um, we'll, that's another subject. But if you guys don't know how to fight, you need to learn. I agree. I totally agree. Got another question here from Big Wute Samaj says, What brand are those aviators? I need something that fits a larger head. Company called Dita. Dita, D I T A. And these are Talon. What you really need to do is go on to uh, a website. Is is it Eyeglass USA or Contacts? Easy Contacts USA. They have a program where you can actually upload. You can take a picture of your face, and it can actually digitize the disc your uh, your your face, and it shows you the optimum frames for your face. See, that's another thing. Sunglasses and all these other kind of things. They your face is different. So the uh, if you have a fuller face, you're going to need a bigger lens and then knowing your pupil distance. That's why it is so important. Even when I was on Obsidian's channel the other day, hiring a professional, they know all this stuff. So at a glance, right? I said this before and I'll say it again. At 25, after 25 years old, you should be on your purpose, doing your shit. Hopefully your time is worth more than your money. Knowing what to do, even if you got to spend couple of hundred dollars just to have somebody point you in the right direction knowing what not to do is more important do i have a do i have a book out for age range 30 not a book but i'm working on it okay um let's go i'm gonna go back and forth uh, let's go to the phone lines i think this is c in vegas thanks for holding man you're on live with donovan hey donovan it's mine 
Oh, Pine. It's Pine in Vegas with the Vegas phone number. Pine, what's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Not much. Just calling to give you both a shameless plug because I've done consultations with both. Of you. Yes, he and has. You both have stepped up my game tremendously. Good. What's going on? Um, what's going on, Kevin? Uh, hey, thanks for turning me on to the Magnani shoes. Oh, yeah. Pairs of the monks. And I was wearing them. I was wearing them at the 21 convention. And just last weekend, I was uh, presiding over a wedding. In a suit that I had to build on the fly, which I used one of your videos for. So thank you very much. There you go, man. Magnani is the best. Actually, they're flying me out to Barcelona to their plant because I talk about them so much. My Mongjani, as it's pronounced, apparently. I call it Magnani. That's what it looks like to me. Um, they're the best shoe value for the money, in my opinion. Also, uh, I had a big hit the other day. I was wearing... Uh, Jacques Fat for Lump, uh into a Chick fil A. I got a compliment. Wait, Pine, hold on. I'll say that again one more time. I want to make sure I want to make sure Kevin can hear this. Pine, say that one more time. What did you wear into a Chick fil A? Jacques Fat for Lump. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the one I made famous. Listen, I have no idea what, either what, that, what you guys are talking about. I'll let you guys do that. Great. Well, it's, a, it's a fragrance that's under 30 bucks. I've been wearing it for 20 plus years and it is just killer. It is just killer. It is just killer. This is Manjani. So like this shoe, Donovan, you a pair of blue jeans and a white t-shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This that just kills the game. Again, it's that cognac color brown that every guy can wear. You can be a fucking lame and look good in this stuff. <laughs> and you and, and it will up your cool points, up your star points, and make you feel better. And here's the funny thing. Even if you don't believe it, people around you will be like, no, you look good. You smell good. Um, and it just does something for the dude. Good stuff, man. Um, I'm going to leave Pine on the line here uh, for just a second here. Uh, Pine, did you have anything else? No, I just wanted to big the shout out to you guys and thank you both for everything you've done. Absolutely. And, you know, thanks to Kevin for getting me turned on some great fragrances like Molecule One. Oh, yeah. Not New York. <laughs> <laughs> I love that stuff. Yeah, he's got all my classics there, man. And Pine is high profile, man. If you guys hey, want to meet a... Pine in person, I'm actually going to have Pine on uh, on an episode next week. Why your diet doesn't work. Pine is the foremost expert uh, in uh, in the keto diet, and he is also the uh, uh, he's also worked security uh, for the, for the 21 convention. He was literally the security director. So you guys will get to meet him in person, uh, next year. So, uh, thanks for calling in pine and, uh, I'll be in touch with you soon, brother. All right, brother. Take it easy. All right, man. Thanks to Kevin. No problem. Later. Later. Man, that guy knows his shit. Like he, dude, that guy is more knowledgeable about the keto diet, um, than anything. Um, da -da -da -da. Kevin Ibanez says, so to start revamping your style, where do you start first? Shoes. Okay. Well, now that that was easy. So you're so if if you want to, and I don't know, maybe you're you're better suited to answer this. So if you want to restart your, um, uh, if you're looking to revamp your style, the three F's: footwear, frames, and fragrance. Mm -hmm. Those are good places to start, and you can just fill everything else in. Does that sound about right? And you want to start at the footwear. The footwear is the foundation to everything. Again. It, you can wear jeans and a t-shirt. They're gonna be Levi's jeans and a Hanes for Hanes t-shirt. Shout out to Rico nine one one by the way with the uh, five dollar donation. If you guys want to donate to the show, I don't take super chat because YouTube takes thirty percent off the top. That's their right. Mm -hmm. uh, streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp and the number one. I'm putting it in the chat now. Streamlabs.com forward slash Donovan Sharp and the number one. Shout out to Rico nineteen eleven mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, for the five dollar donation. Go ahead, Kevin. So you could be wearing just blue jeans from Levi's. You could wear a Hanes Fruit of Loom t-shirt like Tom Ford does when he's at home and throw on these McNani Chelsea boots and look so much better than you would with some run over the meal, run over the side, New Balance. They could even be simple Stan Smiths, but as long as they're clean. Starting with shoes, boots and Chelsea, ch boots and uh, double monk straps okay. are two sexy shoes that men get a hell of a lot of mileage in screw lace-ups i don't want to say screw lace-ups lace-ups don't you don't need to really focus on those at at first if i was a guy starting out going from athletic wear i would grab a, a pair of black chelsea boots 
I will I will grab a pair of brown or cognac colored like this double monk strap shoes. Right. Then I go grab another pair of boots like this time of year, whether it's a work boot. Hell, somebody in the chat room said Timberland. Timberlands work for streetwear or streetwear kind of style uh, or rugged style personality. Okay. Okay. Um, at, what you're really or make what you're really focusing on is getting the. If you get good shoes, trust me. If you get good shoes and you want to put more money in your shoes, don't pay retail though. Like those boots, retail for six hundred dollars. I paid two hundred nineteen bucks. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, and I had them in two days. Uh, and you'll have them for a, forever. You'll have them for a while. Uh, I've had some of my shoes up to twenty years. Take care of your stuff; they'll take care of you. See, I believe that we're dressing men. So, like these glasses, these Dita glasses, uh, yeah, they were three hundred dollars. But I only need this pair. I have all this because I'm an image consultant. And I change my looks up, but this is the only pair I would need. And you know what? If you're dropping in your clothes and fucking up your clothes like that, uh, you would take better care of your stuff if you put a little bit more thought into it. I'm not even gonna say money because I'm not a brand whore for you, <laughs> right? Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh, Chase LeBeau, uh, who we just talked to. Hopefully he wasn't out there in Bankhead with the playing bling and ass niggas. He says, where does the Kangol Tropic 504 hat fit in the, fit in with the rugged or bad boy life, uh, the bad boy style? That's the Tropic, the Kangol Tropic 504 hat. Again. I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, is that which hat? I mean, I don't know which hat he's specifically talking about, but see, here's the thing. Hold on. I'm putting in the link. See, but I will say this before I answer those kind of questions, I always like to know how do you know your style personality is what it is. See, a lot of times guys will come and say, Well, how do I do this for the bad boy style personality? How do you know your style is bad boy? Well, I want it to be. It doesn't matter if you want it to be. If it's not you, who I mean, out of these style personalities, would you want to be boss? Would you want to be European? Would you want to be Americana? Would you want to be adventurer? Would you want to be streetwear? Would you want to be bad boy? Would you want to be prepster? Would you want to be player? Or would you want to be rake? Most guys are going to say, I'd want to be boss or I want to be bad boy. Some younger guys are going to be like, I'd rather have more hip hop style streetwear. But who actually picks prepster? Most people don't pick prepster. Right. But, but that is a lot of people's style personality. Every guy wants to feel the word bad boy just has that countercultural edge to it, yeah. but it doesn't make sense for everybody. I am not a bad boy style personality. I just am not. It will come off as disingenuous, try right. hard and incongruent. If I wore uh, Donovan's uh, handcuff necklace, it would make sense for me. <laughs> and, it, and it doesn't matter that I, I have three black belts and I've Fight full contact. That's not my fucking style. <laughs> Listen, you got to be a hothead like me, right? You got to be <laughs> you know, look everybody in the eye. That That's really the only way to pull that off. Mm. By the way, the, the Kangol Tropic 504 hat is what everybody refers to as the Kangol. It's the Samuel L. Jackson wears it a lot. Um, I know it's big. I mean, I knew it was hold big. Hold on, hold on. I knew it was big in New York City uh, back in... Um, um, back in the back in the nineties, I know Biggie. The the now Biggie wore it. The Biggie wore it the forward way. So uh, so yeah, Chase. Um, um, I don't know. And honestly, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know if my my style personality is the bad boy, whatever. But maybe you're thinking the bad boy label, right? Maybe because Biggie was a part of bad boy. Maybe him so, bad boy. I don't know. <laughs> but no, I wouldn't wear that. And I've got, I guess, according to Kevin, I've got the bad boy style personality. Me personally, I wouldn't wear that. So there, there's always a newsboy kind oh, of style hat right there. Okay, so this is more. It's really it's a newsboy is what it's called. Okay, okay. So this is a denim newsboy, but this fits my style personality. Sam, and, and a newsboy for, that will fit for Donovan uh, would be a something like a denim. Or could even be like a uh, rugged kind of tweed look, a corduroy, but it would fit his style aesthetic. That particular style of hat, that's like seeing a fedora. Fedoras 
to be in a bad boy style personality. We need to have a zipper on them or something. Something that's going to be a little bit countercultural. Okay. Versus for a, for a boss, they would need to be made out of rabbit or uh, fur felt. Okay. And all these different and but again, it's still a fedora. Um, aren't you in Vegas? No, um, I'm actually in Philly now. Philly. Okay. So the last piece I forgot because somebody mentioned a car coat or a pea coat. Oh, that, um, uh, that was uh, P a Ray and PG he had on the pea coat for his presentation. Every guy needs to have what I consider is a car coat or a pea coat. Um, a pea now coat would look good with the uh, with the hat, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. See, see I, this, this is just a, a coat that's three quarter lengths and it cuts off right. My, you know, halfway between my crotch and my knee. Okay. And this is just worn at car length. Not everybody's going to be in a climate to where they need a a big, heavy overcoat. Right. But you got to have something that's um, warmer than those leather jackets. Okay. And not and like I say, with I like to show the car coat because it, you see that that's black, one's brown, and this is gray. Okay. You want to change up your outerwear and put some. A little bit more personality into it because your your clothing items don't need to be boring right obviously right. even your especially even your seasonal stuff so all right that's what that is cool let's go back to the phone lines area code 865 you're on live with donovan and kevin hey what's up donovan what's going on brother how you doing man you doing pretty good uh I had, a, I had a question. I don't know if it's off topic. I don't know what the topic of y'all show is, but um, I've been trying to incorporate the red pill and uh, dealing with uh, better better quality women. Um, I had a question. I, I was wondering, like, how would you? How do you deal with like the uh, the women that's kind of picky on eating? Like, is it okay to compromise with them? Uh, you said picky I mean, about I eating. Compromise, but I, I feel like, I feel like I'm I'm, I'm uh. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, compromising too much. Okay. What are you comp? You said women who are picky about eating or women who are just picky in general? Uh, I mean, you know, they're, they're picky all the way around, but I've knocked out a lot of things. Um, but the eating part kind of, um, it, it get a little too picky on the eating part, like going out to eat stuff like that. Okay. I can actually, I can actually answer the first part of this question. And then Kevin can answer the second part of this question because, um, uh, we're actually talking about uh, what, what do your clothes say about you as a man? So we've got, uh, image consultant, Kevin Samuels, uh, on the show. And I think that, I think that what will cut down a, what, what will sort of get past a lot of picky women is the way you dress. And I'll let, I'll let Kevin answer that question in terms of women who are picky about what they eat. That's on them, right? Um, and you're probably the kind of guy who, uh, and I used to be this way too. The first thing that I would advise you to do is never allow her to pick the restaurant, number one. Women want to know, women like a man with a plan. Women don't want to pick the date. They don't want to make the, they don't want to make the plans. They don't want to do the schedule. They want a man, they just want to sit back, look good, relax, suck dick, go home, and, and that be that. Um, but if you're running into women who are picky about what they eat, what you do is you order for them, but you order what they tell you to. So let's say you're sitting at a restaurant uh, with a with a woman and she's like, well, I don't eat this and I don't eat that and blah, 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 blah. I mean, listen, there's nothing that you can do about that. She's going I mean, at some point she's going to have to eat something. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if she really is too picky, just make fun of her. Be like, well, are you going to eat anything like like I mean, and you don't have to you don't have to have you don't have to have an attitude about it, but. I, I think what I'm trying to tell you is just don't give too much credence to that. Don't don't say now. Here's what you absolutely should not do. Don't try to correct it. Well, what about this? Well, no, that's too hot. Well, what about that? Well, no, that's too. No, if no, you're no, no, no. women who are way too picky about what they eat at restaurants, pay them no attention. They if they're hungry enough, they will figure something out. So don't put too much don't don't put too much time and effort on a woman's complaints. A woman who is complaining to you about eating that's a shit test. Yep. And, as men, we're you know we want to fix things. This is what we do. This is one of those things where we just need to step back. If you're at if you're at a restaurant with a woman, and this better be the fifth or sixth date after you have fucked her five or six times. Mm -hmm. if you're like, well, I don't like this, and I don't like that, and I don't like this, dude. Pay no attention to her. 
as a matter of fact, you can be like, well, you know what? I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the steak and potatoes, and I'm gonna do this and blah 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 blah. Just let me know what you want to eat, and I'll relay that to the waiter or waitress. You know, my question would be this: You should know what this woman if if you, she's going out on a date, you should already know that before you go out, right? Because, like Donovan said, I'm not taking any broad out that I'm not in a relationship with. I'm not taking you out to dinner. And before I decide to be in a relationship with you, I, I damn sure fucked you. We've had sex, and I know what your temperament is. If you're a vegetarian, okay, cool. I'll decide if I just want to date a vegetarian. Maybe I don't want to do that. I'm not going to sit back and go someplace and have her dictate shit to me. I've done that in my simping days, and that shit does nothing for me. No. If I'm taking you out, it's because I'm treating you. And you're going to fucking sit there and tell me what I knew. So maybe maybe the question that I think the answer is better vetting up front. Not only that, Kevin, I believe that the better you're dressed, I think the more well behaved women are with you. And and listen, you are the quintessential example of that. If you're mm -hmm. dressed like an ain't shit nigga, bitches are gonna treat you like an ain't shit nigga. So if you show up to a date or a meetup dressed like Kevin. If you've been fucking her for, you know, a week and a half or so and you decide, OK, she's been a good woman. I think I'll take her out on a dinner date and you show up dressed like Kevin. She might have complaints about the food, but she's not going to vocalize it to you because you look like you're about your shit. So if she is a vegetarian or if she does have an allergy to peanuts, she'll say, you know what? I'm going to do the chicken salad without the chicken. And by the way, uh, area code 865. Um, I have a peanut allergy, so make sure that, you know, if you would ask the waiter or waitress, is there any, is there any peanut oils or peanut in there? But the main thing is, is dress, dress the part and don't feed into their emotional shenanigans. If women are picky about what they eat, fine. They're women. They're supposed to be picky. But at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about a woman's eating preferences, but do not succumb to the pressure that comes with, okay, well, if she's going to be a picky eater, let me let her pick the restaurant. I can promise you she will have even more complaints because she picked the restaurant. She's not going to be relaxed. Uh, thanks for the call. Uh, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was saying. Like, is there like three main things? Like, I guess it'd be better quit three main things they all need to compromise with when it comes to eating. Like, I mean, with girls I'm dating. Huh? I didn't uh, say that last part again. I said this uh like three main things that I need to do like uh to not compromise uh compromise with when it comes to eating. Okay. I mean with girls, you know, you date, you fucking and you know, and they sucking and stuff. So sure. And listen, and again, I'll just sum it up like this. What she eats or doesn't eat has absolutely no bearing on your relationship or lack thereof with her. That's right. right. It has, it has, I mean, listen, if she's a picky eater, fine. You're going to order what you order. I got, I actually got a comment in the chats. Doyen says, I would just order my own food. And whenever she's ready to order hers, tell her, uh, you know, uh, tell the server if she's take, if she takes too long, I'm done eating. I'll call for the check. Right. I mean, you don't, I mean, again, and I know that this is a concern, but, I, but trust me when I tell you, if you're dating a woman who is a picky eater, it is inconsequential. If anything, if she's a picky eater, she's much more likely than not to stay in good shape. And that's what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for the call, uh, Eric code uh, 865. Eric code 404, I see you in the queue. I see another, there's another number, there's another, there's somebody else in the queue and I've tried to bring them on. It's given me all sorts of letters and numbers. I've tried to bring them on. It's not letting me do it. Um, but uh, Eric code 404, I'm going to get to you in just a second. Got another question here uh, from Eric code 205, who is fitness for life. Um, he says, what about, he said, what about belts, Kevin? I struggle with belts and where to, and where to buy brim type hats, hats and belts. Okay. So belts, uh, I buy, I like Bailey's of Hollywood. They have a variety of hats for all style personalities at reasonable prices. And as far as belts, don't wear them with suits. Um, actually I'm getting away from wearing so many belts because, you know, belts do one thing. They, they, they make a line in your clothing and there's a point of delineation. If you're wearing belts, you need to be wearing belts with like more casual clothes, like jeans, uh, with some trousers, but when, and I'm going to take it out here. If you're in the gym and you're working out and you, and you have a, your body is, you know, proportioned well. Mm -hmm. Tuck your pants. You, you do better. Like this sweater I'm wearing right now, I tuck my sweater in my trousers. I don't wear a belt. 
Okay, okay. Because it, it first of all, this is a belts are a new thing. So the answer to my question is I'm not even wearing belts so much, but also because I have I'm in a better shape, I can tuck my pants, my shirt, and I look good that way too. Okay. If you want to wear a belt, make sure it's the same color and the same leather as your shoes and the same finish. I mean, don't wear glossier shoes and then wear a duller belt. Hmm? That's hard to do, right? And I think that's I think that's where a lot of guys have problems with belts. Your belt so, has to match your shoes, and it's hard to get. Now, with blacks, it's pretty standard. It's just blacks. But when you're talking about browns, if you've got the leather uh, double monk strap shoes, it's going to be hard to wear a belt that matches your shoes that also matches that jacket, right? Well, then there, there are companies that um, make belts that have this latching system to where you can actually change the belt and the buckle out at the same time. Let me go ahead and put drop this in the chat room. Um, to where you don't have to spend a shit ton of money on belts, belt systems. Uh, I think I showed on last the last time I was uh, on here, men's belt systems. Ants and belts, belts without holes. Um, so yeah, so ants and belt, you can like get three belts and two buckles, and it and that gives you what six different belts. So you can get a brown leather, black leather, gray leather, and then get two buckles. And you can change the buckle with these three, this with these three. And you can keep on mixing and matching. See, you don't want to put a tremendous amount of money into belting and things. Belts are some of the last things you buy. Right. Okay. You put money into your shoes and then get that one well-cut dark suit. This time of the year, we're, we're talking about outerwear. So get a killer leather jacket and, you know, and then that kind of stuff, the belts will kind of come along. Um, Second part of the question, where to buy brim type hats? Brims, Bailey's of Hollywood. Br oh, okay. Bailey's of Hollywood. See, brims, that's a that's a broad thing. Most guys are calling fedora brim, but Bailey of Hollywood. I like the Poet series, but in Bailey, they have like 200 plus hats. You can pick, choose, mix, and match. Okay. Cool. Okay, uh, I got another question here. Uh, by the way, a couple of compliments. Uh, William Free says that's a nice blazer. Um, Thank you. Nick says, "Oh my God, that works so well in Europe." And I, I don't know what he's talking about, but I'm assuming it's everything that he's seen. <laughs> Trav Hawkins wants to know, Donovan and Kevin, what is your take on fitted and bucket hats? Fitted hats, um, again, that's more of that hip hop street style. Okay. Um, most guys aren't really wearing hats these days. Okay. The only style personality that really focuses a lot on hats is that hip hop street. And here's the disconnect for that. If you're not in the industry, if you're not a rapper or a musician and you wearing fitted and all that other kind of stuff, uh, past age 25, you're working against yourself because that is a more youthful style. Okay. Uh, it's like, a guys get mad at me but the truth is black men tend to try to hold on to this far too long our first show was the whole drop the jordan thing yes the jordans are only in this style personality and there is no group of men anywhere that fights to hold on to a youthful style expression but we have all been in a club and seen an old dude in the club like what the fuck's he doing here like you 40 and still fucking around with you know 21 and up you know like, dude, graduate on up. Even like Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons is in, in hip hop. He has graduated his stock. Jay Z. Jay Z's gone from Hawaiian shirts to the whole, when he was doing the big pimper stuff, now he has a more adult, um, a more adult style expression. He's a big Tom Ford wearer. To answer the question about that hat thing, it's really, it fits a small, small segment. And if your style personality is not authentically hip hop street, you would do better finding your real style personality and just doubling down on that. Good stuff, man. Um, real quick, uh, Rico1911 wants to know what your Streamlabs link is. We can drop something uh, in the tin there for you. While you work I think somebody put it in there already. Okay, very good. Excellent. Um, Kevin Abanez wants to know, what kind of pants go with cameo jackets? That's a very good question. Camo cam Camouflage jackets? Um, jeans work with everything. Okay. Jeans work with camo jackets, but again, I'm going to go back to the same thing. Camouflage, camouflage jacket. Um, 
very, very, not very functional. Not okay. very functional and certainly not long term. No, definitely. Uh, I think it's got more of a militia type. Mm -hmm. I think he said cam. It said cameo. I've never heard of a cameo jacket, but camo jackets, you know, cam cameo. I don't know what a cameo jacket is. I don't know what he's talking about. But uh, yeah, but that's cool. I actually met up with him in DC. He's just trying cool. to find his way here. Um, let's see. Da -da 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 Hang on one second. I thought I had some. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, let's go back to the phone lines here. Uh, area code four hundred four. You're on live with Kevin and Donovan. What's going on? What's going on? How your brother doing today? Doing good, man. Good. That's good. That's good. Actually, you guys kind of just uh, talked about my question. My question was about to be about uh, was about was about Jordans because I know in the past you guys have talked a lot about why men couldn't wear Jordans, and I never got into I never watched those uh, those particular videos as to why men shouldn't wear why, why men shouldn't wear Jordans. Because personally, and and not because of this. But personally, I wear. Now I'm. A, I'm. A, now it may be different because I'm a young guy. I'm 21. Oh so yeah, I'm a young yeah, guy. Yeah, right. But I wear. I wear. You know, Jordans, Kobe's, K, uh, Katie's. You know, Kyrie. Now I like. I like basketball shoes. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, with that being said, wh why is it? Why is it? Because I. Because I want to know why you guys, especially um, specifically for Kevin too, because because you're an image consultant. Why is it that you say that black men should stop wearing Jordans? And you know basketball shoes and fitness and stuff like that because I wear a lot of that myself personally. But you're 21. He's 21. Yeah, that's that, that's the answer. So you're 21. So let me answer that question. You're 21. 21 is the age where you can dress at H and M, ASOS, and you can wear trendy. So at 21, you can wear a faux hawk. At 21, you can wear a long line tee. At 21, you can wear Yeezys. At 21, you can wear Ultra Boost. At 21, you can wear Supreme and Off White. You can wear all these trends, but the closer you get to 25. You got to start turning back off of that stuff because no matter what age you are, you will at one day be a 30 year old man. And at age 30, you reach the age of respect. Black men already have an inherent problem, like it or not, being respected by all other groups of men. You are at the bottom. There is an article written by a young black writer who worked for BuzzFeed talking about he did his own style experiment. I will put the link in the chat room. And he talked about how he went Monday through Friday to the same places doing the same things at the same time. And he chronicled day in and day out how differently he was treated when he was wearing Jordans and that kind of stuff versus when he was just dressed business casual or more appropriate. Wasn't dressed any, he was dressed appropriate for his style personality and his age. Uh, but he just wasn't wearing Athens streetwear. And what he noticed is he got treated 180 degrees different at the end of the article you can actually read how his own entire internal dialogue i don't like this because it's uncomfortable it's bougie i feel it's this i feel it's that i feel it's this but it was all about how he felt about what that stuff looked like now the treatment mm -hmm. he got treated so much better just being more appropriately being dressed um like a like a damn man uh versus dressing like a youthful, a youth. Right. You're 21. If you were 30, this would be a different conversation. And here's another thing. Okay. I'm 41. I am literally hey. twice your age. Mm -hmm. I want your Jordans today. Mm -hmm. uh, De uh, Devin, um, Devin worked from home today, and we had some we had some errands to run. So I, you know, I wore a nice pair of jeans. Um, I wore a, just I wore a t-shirt. I wore my I wore my watch, threw on a pair of Jordans. I'm just, of course, listen, beard was tight, made sure I was smelling good, but I wasn't really there to impress anybody. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't trying to give off an image. So so when we say mm -hmm. don't I think what we said is don't wear Jordans if you want to be taken seriously, right? If you're just out with your homeboys yeah. and you're hanging out, or if you're running errands with your girlfriend at the age of 41, yeah, by all means wear mean you can wear Jordans all you want to, but it, but Jordan's just like any other type of shoe or footwear. It really depends upon where you are, what you're doing and what the purpose is. And the older you get, the less you will find out that it's really not appropriate to wear, not appropriate, but the older you get, the more situations you find yourself in where wearing Jordan's just isn't really what you should do. Well, I could have, I could have easily said flip flops. Right. But here's the thing, and most people who are have well not this, this is really dead push towards the sneaker head. Yes, there are people who come to my channel who are who watch that broadcast 
flamed me and couldn't stand me until they realized what I was saying. Don't have 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 90 pair of Jordans and not have one well-cut dark suit. There are men who come to my channel who had upwards of 75 pair of sneakers and did not have dress shoes. Right. That is a damn problem. Because it, you have no balance. You're leaning too far in one side. Let's say you are. Listen, now, if you are a sneakerhead or if you're if you're a guy who collects shoes and you go to conventions. Yeah, by all means, that's the proper that's the proper place mm -hmm. to wear them. So, I mean, listen, I just bought a pair of Jordans for seventy five dollars, eighty nine dollars, eighty nine dollars with tax. So, again, um, and I guess, you know, I didn't want to be hyperbolic, but. It's not that if you wear Jordans, no one will take you seriously. It's just that it really depends upon the situation. And you're a young guy. You can wear Jordans wherever you want. But just like Kevin said, the closer you get to 30, the, and Rolo Tomasi, who's the, who's the godfather of the red pill, says men don't become men until they're 30. So mm -hmm. listen, by all means, enjoy your 20s, man. Wear Throw them out. Don't throw them away, but when you turn 30, when you get to be 30, 35, when you start to be when you start coming into your own as a man, wear the Jordans with your homeboys when you're when you're out doing whatever. Just understand that the older you get, the less you're going to have to wear them again if you want to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for the call, Eric Code 404. That's actually a really good question. Um, and it, it's good that he it's good that he cleared that up because I think a lot of guys um they 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 read the title. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> wearing Jordans. Listen, Rolo Tomasi asked, "Is Donovan trying out for Dolomite today?" Yes. <laughs> Dragonfly Jones. <laughs> Dude, all I need is the afro, and I would totally be Jim Kelly. Right. So, Dragonfly Jones. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, we got one more caller here because I got to be on the brother pill in twenty minutes. Area code eight six five. You're on live with Donovan and Kevin. Hey, I was just listening. Okay. Hello? He said he's just listening. Oh, hello. Oh, oh yep. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, oops. I accidentally hung up on him. My bad, 865. Call back if you're just listening. <laughs> you um, know, when it comes right down to, see, a lot of times guys have a problem with image and style because they feel like they are conforming. Right. Guys hate to be told what to do. So somebody comes on and say, hey, man, you need to dress. You can't tell me what I got to do. I don't have you. Right. I can't tell you what to do. Um, but what I am saying is whatever you decide to put on your body as a man, you got to choose the outcome. I say this as a man, you need to think about what you're wearing as seriously as you would think about a tattoo you put on your body, because. Mm -hmm. I could have a tattoo. I could have a badass dragon on an 18 inch bicep. That's going to say one thing. But if I have a fucking mini mouse, it's going to say another thing. It's still a tattoo. It's communication. And like with your style personality, Jordan's working the bad boy style personality. The bad boy style personality is bent around, is based around rebellion. Rebellion is what it's based around. You know what? You know what will be the version of Jordan's in the bad boy style personality? Fucking black wingtip Oxfords. Ooh. That would be the that would be the thing that would stick out like a sore thumb. If you busted up in a pair of fucking pleated slacks with cuffs, a polo shirt, and a pair of black wingtip Oxfords, I wouldn't know who the hell Donovan Sharp was. I'd be like, what the fuck is he wearing? It doesn't make any sense. Well, Kevin, I appreciate you making time for us tonight, man. Um, a lot of listen, a lot of my guys ask me all the time, hey, when is Kevin coming back on? Um, and I mean, dude, Kevin and I, it's funny, ever since, like I said, you were on my very you were on episode 140. And ever since then, we have both, I mean, we both, of course, I lost my YouTube channel, but I was close to, I think it was a little over 10,000 subscribers. I've got almost, I've got over 500 patrons now, and people certainly know who I am. You're a hard guy to get a hold of because you're, I mean, dude, you're flying to Paris to go to some plant for some right? shoemaker. I'm not, I can't pronounce. So it's hard for, it's hard for you and I uh, to, uh, to get up with each other, but we have each other's phone numbers. And uh, listen, man, I think we owe it to the audience to do a little more of these collabs every once in a while, man. These are always, these are always very educational, not only for my guys, but for me, like I learned just as much as you do. Oh, I'm going to try to put this link in the chat room. I don't know if I can, cause I'm not a moderator, but oh, I'll just leave, uh, I'll put uh, the in the chat and I'll make you a mod. Okay. Let's see if I can put it in there. Right. Yeah. I'll make you a mod. Channel. That way, if you're ever in the chat, you can, you know, you can sure. see what's going on. 
Uh, King Nick wants to know, um, would you happen to have that BuzzFeed link? Uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to put in. The, that's what oh, I was trying to put in. The, so if you put, if you make a mod, I'll just drop it. Okay. Because that's not going to fix it. All right. Yeah, just type, uh, you know, testing and I'll, I'll make you a mod and I'll, I'll drop that link. Okay. Um, testing. Let's see. Uh, somebody asked how much is a consultation guys go to buy kevin samuels.com go to buy kevin samuels.com and uh all right you are officially modded i dubbed the a star right. towers moderator all right, there we go yeah go to buy kevin samuels.com and you'll find out how much all of his uh all of his uh consultations and everything are king nick also says flip-flops are just slap yeah flip-flops are for the beach flip-flops yeah. are definitely for the beach uh, there's, the, there's the link to that BuzzFeed article. Really good reading, guys. Okay. And it's by a young black man in LA. So, uh, and I understand. And here's the thing, I understand why a lot of guys don't uh, get image. Manhood has been under assault for the last thirty years. Mm, don't I know it? And you know, and baby boomers, baby boomers, my father's generation, they spent their time rebelling against the tradition of their fathers. The greatest generation is where a lot of Generation X people actually have to look back to for style. We had to emancipate our style because our fathers, if they were there, did not teach us. Didn't teach us how to shave, didn't teach us the benefits of classical men's fashion. We're three generations out from the last generation that actually took men's image as something serious. That's why a show like Mad Men resonated with so many people. Yes. You saw men dressing like men, doing man shit, drinking, smoking, slapping chicks on the ass, getting deals done. Right. You also noticed that men were dressed well. So generation, this next generation next or generation Z, the millennials, when the one out the millennials, they're actually wanting to learn more about how to use their image as a tool to get what they want and still be able to dress comfortably. So there's this resurgence happening. Um, and that's what that article represents. A young man who saw that he needed to have a different outcome, but he had to deal with the, his thought processes about how men's fashion and style looked. And when he really realized a lot of the ways men look at style is based a lot through how their mothers raised them. Wow. That's a real disconnect. Your mama didn't value men. You can almost guarantee your sense of style is going to be less than a manhood standard. Let me ask you one last question before we end this. And I think I think it's extremely important. Um, a guy who I'm going to have on my show next week, his name is Jonathan. He's, he's from modernlifedating.com. Mm -hmm. He and my girlfriend, Devin, have both told me on separate occasions the tide is beginning to turn. Mm -hmm. Feminism is on its way. Or I don't think they said feminism is on its way out, but they said people are starting to wake up. People are starting to, people are starting to understand that feminism is no longer uh feminism it, it is quite literally a hate group that promotes hate speech mm -hmm. what do you think of the way people dress you just referenced mad men that was a revolutionary television show that harkened back to the days where men dressed like men they did man shit they smoked drank in the office they're fucking their secretaries etc cetera, etc cetera. what do you think about men's fashion is is our guys and again it's not just men's fashion this is your image mm -hmm. a lot of, and fashion is a female term right mm -hmm. like it's fat no no this is image consulting mm -hmm. evan samuels is not a fashion guy he is an image consultant he works on your image where do you think men's image is headed where i mean is i mean is it i mean are we are we on the upswing are we on the downswing is we're on the up we're, we're on the upswing fashion is Fashion is temporary. Style is a lifetime. The way you dress is your style because that's who Donovan is. And now we're on the upswing because so many, because of the red pill movement, MGTOW, so many in stepping away. But what happens when men are, part of red pill is not just learning female nature, it's also reaffirming your masculine nature. And a part of that is the way you approach, I mean, uh, present yourself to the world and how you present yourself to you. So now we're having more men finally for the first time, finally or for the first time, ask, what do you want? Why do you like what you like? Why do you do what you do? So guys are really tuning in and having permission to be men. This is a great time. Okay. Great time. And people are going to look back over, they're going to study this last, the previous four years and the next four years, this 10 year window, they're going to study this for the next hundreds, hundreds of years to come. We have undergone the largest change in human communication since the printing press. We are in the middle of it. We can't realize it, but we are literally building an airplane as we're flying it. 
this show was being beamed around the world. And guys, no matter what hubble they find themselves in, can find a little kernel of red pill truth uh, to sustain them. Basically, what I'm saying is look good, smell great, be the best version of yourself each and every day for you. Not for a bitch, for you. Right. Be a man, dress like a man, do man shit for you. And if the broads come, they come. If not, they don't. But you still like who you see in the mirror. That that I I, I don't remember that message being said in my lifetime. Wow. Let me ask you something, Kevin. Um, you're on Twitter, correct? Uh, I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really on Twitter. Okay. There's a guy that I need that I want that I'd like you to hook up with, man. His name is Tanner Guzzi. Oh yeah, Tanner. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah. I'll be seeing him. Learning all about him. Okay. Yeah, you guys definitely need to get together because you guys are like, I mean, it, it, it's like uh, it's like men's uh, image consultant uh, mm -hmm. overloads. Roger McAllen 3 says, Donovan, your live shows are getting better and better. Yeah, that's probably because I'm having more guests, right? So basically what Roger McAllen is telling me, hey, Donovan, when you shut the fuck up and let other people talk, your show gets better. <laughs> I love it. Kevin, man, listen, as always, thank you for dropping this rock solid wisdom. I'm actually not going to put this show on Patreon. I'm going to let this stay right here on YouTube. Um, because I think a lot of, I, I think a lot of guys need to understand that image. Andre Agassi said it best. I think back in the 1980s when he was the world's greatest tennis player, he says image is everything, man. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. he's right. You know, people want to say, well, image isn't everything. It's what you have inside. No, people aren't going to know what you have inside unless they're interested in the outside. That's the world we live in. Uh, so Kevin, I appreciate uh, you coming on with us today. Uh, tell everyone where they can find you, how they can book you, et cetera. Uh, you can find me at, at YouTube at buykevinsamuels.com or the website buykevinsamuels.com. And on the web, you can, and in the link on any video, you can find the links to uh, the Skyle Consultation, Patreon, all that good stuff. I'm always around on YouTube. You'll find me. I'm out here doing network. You're the man, Kevin. Hey, again, thanks for making time for us tonight. Uh, if you guys want to see more of Donovan, Jim Kelly, Cobra Kai, whatever the case may be, Dragonfly Jones, I'm going to be on O'Shea's channel here in less than 10 minutes. I'm going to go eat some Halloween candy real quick because that's going to be my dinner. Hopefully I can keep that down. And I will see you guys in about 10 minutes. Take care, Kevin. Peace. Later, guys.